Hey YouTube, this is Carrie from Razor Sharp Crafts, and excuse my sniffing and all that, I'm still working on getting over this dang cold, it just won't go away. <coughs> I have a doctor's appointment for tomorrow morning if I'm not feeling better, so. But alright, yesterday I showed you, okay, all the dyes that I'm going to use can be found at diamonddyes.com. And coupon code thanks Carrie will get you 10% off and free shipping on all all orders over $35 and that's international and US and international so definitely a good deal check it out buy some dyes there's lots available yesterday I showed you this card and this is where you can put a gift card in here and then it's got a little thing for like writing your sentiment or whatever on so today we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to do that card. Well, that style card. We're going to do a different one, though. So first of all, you need an A2 envelope. And for those that aren't in the U.S., this envelope measures 5 and 3 quarters by 4 and 3 eighths. So five and three quarters by four and three eighths inches. Please don't ask me to put it into centimeters because I'm no good with that. <laughs> then what we need to do is we're going to seal the envelope. Now you can just lick it to seal it however you want. I'm just going to use this little K and Company um, tape runner thingamabobber. Oh, okay. And then just seal it. Okay. And then you can fold it in half if you want to find the half mark. I just measure it. So right there. So it's one, two, two and seven eighths of an inch. So you need to cut this in half at two and seven eighths of an inch. Oh, I almost messed up already. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. I almost cut it at three. So two and seven eighths of an inch will give you two. Um even pockets. Then just make sure that they're facing their open ends are both facing the same way. And then just do you don't have to do it on both sides, you can just do it on one. I'm a bit of a tape fanatic. Now when I line these up, I line the open ends up first, like make sure they're level, and then lay it down. Just because they are, like when I made that first one, it was just like a smidgen of a hair off, but it doesn't matter if it's off on the bottom. So these are my open ends that are facing me right now. So I'm just going to line them up. and then lay it flat. Now if you look really closely, you can kind of see how that back one overlaps just a little bit. This way that's at the bottom, so you don't even see it because it's inside the card. So now that you have this all set, you can set it aside. And I have an idea in my head. I don't know how this is going to turn out. It could be completely horrible. It could be awesome. But we shall see. Hold on one second. Alright. So then you have to cut your cardstock. And I'm going to use this light blue. This light blue. It's not my usual paper tray ink. But um, it will do. 
So then you're going to cut it at four and three quarters by uh, seven and five eighths. All right, so let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five. So just to say it again, your paper is seven and five eighths by four and three quarters. Seven and five eighths by four and three quarters. Then, whatever you use for scoring. And we're going to score at one and three eighths and at four and a half. So one and three eighths, four and a half. Score it up. Okay. Then you're going to crease your folds. Okay. This happened when I made my other one too. It's like a smidgen off, so when you fold it up, it bows it. So literally just trim, just shave a little bit off at a time. Like when I say literally, like see how minute that is. And because it didn't cut that side very well. There. There. See, now it folds up good and tight. And that first cut would have been enough, but it didn't cut on this bottom part very well. So I'd take a little more off. But just like as short of a sliver as you can get your um, cutter to do is best. Sorry, there's something on my little bone folder here. I love this bone folder. It's a Teflon. I got it at bonefolder.com and I I just absolutely love it. Okay, this is a We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper and this is the 1 8 and 3 8 and I'm using the 1 8 and I'm chomping all my corners. And when I say all my corners, I mean all of them. Fold it up, chomp the bottoms. I like rounded corners just because I think it gives your project more of a finished look. I know that folded edge. Don't have this folded in when you chomp the corner because you might chomp it. So make sure it's unfolded, but that this is folded over. Cause see that's right up in there. Probably wouldn't have chomped it, but I don't want to take the chance. So now we have this much going for us. Oh. All right. I think I want to use, this is Azure, however you pronounce that, stays on, it's blue, it is blue, alright, I'm going to put that top flap up, I'm putting a little bit of this sticky stuff, on the back. This is, um, I did a video a while back about making die, excuse my head, about making stamps out of your diamond dies, or your diamond dies dies, I guess would be the correct wording. So this is one that I had cut out, and it's just the top layer for the monarch butterfly. And you just ink it up. And, sorry, I 
want something under that. And I'm just using this to create like some background imaging, basically. So we're going to leave that at that. <coughs> All right get this out of here. Now, I'm going to put some decorative paper on this. And I have this, I don't know where I got it, but it looks really cool. And like these, it's like, these are actually bubbled up, like almost like it's like liquid pearls or something like that. All right, so we want this at one and a quarter. by four and one, two, three, four, four and five eighths. So one and a quarter. By four and five eighths. My only problem is I don't know how well this is gonna corner chomp because it's it almost feels like maybe like a homemade paper fabric-y feel. Oh, it corner chumps though. I just kind of thought that this looks like butterfly trails. Excuse my head if it's in view, but I'm trying to line that up the best I can. So now we're going to create our closure. And oh, it's okay, it's the side of one of the little silver things. I'm like, why is that bubble? But it's just where it cut. So now we're going to create a closure for this. I'm not going to use um, <sighs> something on the bottom of my case here. Anyways, I'm not going to use Velcro like I did on the other one. some gummed up like when you get a credit card in the mail and it's stuck to the paper it's like that gummy stuff but I got it off it's all good all right so for this I'm thinking I have no clue <laughs> what's gonna look good on here
Let's do... Alright, bear with me. Please. I should have dug something out prior, but... Alright, so we want that. And this... Oh, I gotta get my big shot. Hold on. And I have an idea on how to um, incorporate in that white paper with the little pearly things on it, too. So, we're going to do this one in dark blue. Normally, I would use washi tape to hold them down, but... Too worried about it. I'm gonna put some cardstock on top here. Oof. And they didn't cut. Hold on, I know I'm off camera, but... Alright. The big one looks like it cut through. The more intricate cut or dies from diamond dies usually need a shim to cut all the way through like the heart flourish especially like that one I always have to use a shim with it all right so I'm gonna set that aside and now I'm doing the The background, big part of the butterfly, the backing, I don't know. See, because these, nothing on them cut right out. Possibly. The little one's going to make me out to be a liar. will need to be poked out. Some will fall out, but most have to be poked out. And you always want to poke them from the front backwards. It's just that they poke out better that way. See some of these fell out already on this one. I hope I'm talking loud enough. I have like an echo in my head because my sinuses and stuff being so blocked up. So like to me I sound loud but I'm probably whispering. <laughs> Here we go. I 
And I was thinking, oh man, a blue butterfly, really? But you know what? I've actually seen blue butterflies. It may have been just on TV or it may have been in person. I don't quite remember. And I was just attached these with a zig two-way glue pen. Seems to work pretty easy. should have put a paper underneath this, but I can clean that off. All right. Now, if you didn't want to have to line up these little antennae, you could trim them off of the bottom one and just use your top one, but I find they line up pretty easy. So there's that one, cute little blue butterfly. All right, I'm using this one on the inside, but I'm going to go ahead and get it ready. There we go. There's the little guy. Poor gal. Alright, that's pretty dry. I'm just going to use this as just an adhesive eraser. Get that all off of there. I think this is made by Xyron, if I remember correctly. I actually found it at our base exchange on base, not at my craft store. They have one small little craft aisle in there where they keep very little stuff. Actually it's only like, it's like an aisle and then it's like half of an aisle on one side is craft stuff. Alright, now we need some pop dock type things. I'm going to use these 3D foam squares. They make them thinner than this too, which I, I have those ones too, but... I'm going to use these bigger ones. Now, I'm thinking this might blend a little too well. I was trying to make it match, and I think it matches a little too much. If we do it like that.
I can't decide what I want to do here. All right, let's hold off on that just for a second. Let's go ahead and put this on our inside. Unless you're just going to put adhesive on all four sides. Of course. Just make sure it's above your fold. You can kind of see my fold there. You just got to make sure it's above that. So, and then below that fold, and then I just center it the best I can. And then with this, you just fold it up. Press down and voila. All right. All right, what to do here? All right, I'm gonna stop the camera for a minute. I gotta take care of some things and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I'm going with a different idea here. We are going to use Velcro. But I'm gonna do it a little differently than the way I did the one yesterday. some glue across the top of that. All right. From my knowledge, the rule of Velcro is the fuzzy one goes on top. I don't know where I heard that, read it, whatever, but that's what I go by. Fuzzy on top. So the way I do this is I put them together and these two are being jerks and won't go together. Haven't you guys ever heard the saying, we go together like Velcro? There we go. All right, excuse my head. I got the fuzzy side against that. And then just press it down. And then just be really careful the first time you pull it up that you got a good seal. So that's like that. All right. So we have that now. And what I'm going to do Do I want to use crystal lacquer? 
I got 3D crystal lacquer and I got glossy accents. I want to put one of them on the dark blue of the butterfly because it'll make it stand out more from the background there. And that's what I want. Excuse me, go with the, I just got this in the mail yesterday. Um, Blitzy had it on sale a week or so ago. And those of you that follow me know I love Blitzy. So I about put that tip in there. But they had a whole bunch of this stuff on sale, so I decided to check it out. Now is that supposed to just sit on there? Or... Yeah, I guess it just sits. We'll see how this goes. We'll do it together. Probably supposed to shake it. Yeah, it's coming out. It's my head blocking, I'm sorry. Alright, I'm going to continue doing this until I cover the whole dark blue part. So I'm going to stop the camera because this is going to get really boring. And I'll start it back up once I get this done. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. And I have that all done. And now I just got to let it dry and we'll see how it looks. So we're going to set that aside. And we're going to create our insert for our sentiment. Now I did my other one at two and a half by three and a half. Basically ATC card size. So and my thoughts were whenever my cutting blade lifts up the edge of one side like basically where it presses it down um, into the groove as it's cutting which basically is a good sign that I'm going to need to replace my blade very soon I just use my bone folder and do like I just did and I just Rub the edges, smooths it right back out. So I'm going to use this little guy as my pull tab instead of creating a tab with my tab punch. All right, so. Um, I want it lower. Right about there. Got a little bit of the ATC tape in there. Easily pulls right out. 
And I shouldn't have put that on just yet because I didn't chomp my edges. So... Will it come off? <sighs> there we go. Minimal damage that can be easily fixed. So, pay attention to what you're doing. That's more of a note to myself than a note to y'all. But I'm going to use the excuse that I've been sick and my head's all fuzzy. Alright. Now we just need to get rid of that tape. And then again. ATG tape across the top. Ugh. Sticky, sticky, sticky. Let's see. Alright, well, I didn't ruin my card in any way, shape, or form, so I guess it doesn't matter where I put this back down on. I I would honestly say that if I was tested, I would be diagnosed with like a mild form of A or OCD. Because there's literally there are literally things that seriously bother me and that I have to fix them. Like this was just a little bit crooked and I knew it was going to bother me. And I know the saying is, if I wanted it perfect, I'd have bought it. But with me, if I know I can fix it to make it not crooked or whatever, then I have to do it. Like, I can't just leave it. My husband just embraces it. He understands. Like, uh, he'll make the kids' bed and he'll put the sheet on upside down. Like, because my one son, he's got Avenger sheets. And so it's got, like, the word Avengers on it and it's got pictures of the Avengers' heads. And he'll put it to where the words are upside down and the head's upside down. And, um,. Like, I have to change it. It'll bother me. And I think he does it on purpose, to be honest. I really do. I think he does it to drive me nuts. Whoops. What just happened? Something fell. I'm going to guess it was a punch. My desk has an old computer desk, so I keep my most frequently used punches on the pull-out tray for the, what was for the keyboard. Alrighty. Um, so this will go in here. I can't put it in just yet because um, that's still drying, so I can't touch it. I'm going to touch up a couple spots on the crystal lacquer that I see that I missed. And just so you know, if you have um, like any squeezing issues with your hands, I don't recommend covering an area this big. 
like I did. Because I'll tell you what, when I was finishing up, I'm like, man, my hand is sore from squeezing so much. And I don't have any problems. Just that motion of squeezing it. I guess I just have weak hands. So we're going to let that dry and then once it's dry I'll come back and we'll put this in it and show the finished up card. So I hope you will stay tuned. Okay, I'm back and this has dried as you can see because I'm touching it. Um, this was the 3D crystal lacquer we put on it and as you can see it's it did exactly what we needed to make this stand out <clears throat> away from this. So, and if you recall, we finished up by making our little tab. So we open this up, drop that down in there, and that fits like perfectly. Wow, that was like a perfect fit, so I'm glad I did move that butterfly down some. So now you have this where you can put your sentiment or a little note or whatever or sentiment on the front note on the back and put that in there and then you can put a gift card or something in the back whatever you choose and then you just close it up and you can give it like this or you can stick it in another envelope one thing I am going to do is I have so blah 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 <laughs> silver pearl liquid pearls and I'm just going to I see people do stuff like this all the time and I've never done it before so I'm just going to put a couple Just three little dots, the rule of threes. And the rule of threes is that um, odd numbers are better than even. So you do like three of whatever you're doing. And that is, like I said, that was the um, sil silver pearl. So it'll kind of bring this down in. And I just wanted the three right there. So. That is our finished project. So um, even though this, this video was kind of long, um, it, they don't take that long to make. They're actually pretty quick. So, and um, you can close them in all different ways. You can close it with a ribbon around it, a belly band, um, the Velcro idea. Um, this one has the Velcro on the flap because this is the masculine one. So. It's made to, it's pretty plain. And then that one I use the round tab punch, the Stampin' Up round tab punch. So lots of different options, but there is the finished project. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.